Hello everybody, Lance here. Uh, today we're, we're doing a slightly more advanced topic. We're still talking about push-ups, but we are discussing re the reversed spinal curve during your push-up. I'm hoping that just, you know, nobody watches this video except for one of you and you're like, oh my God, this video has everything. So, um, the, you know, in my previous video, we talked about the width of the rib cage, and we're talking about doing really good push-ups. And, and push-ups are a great, great upper body exercise because they incorporate so much stability. They incorporate the serratus anterior, which helps control rib cage position, and all of that is great, but you can still mess it up, right? So if I have ribs that are flared, or if I have somebody whose ribs are flared, I'm probably trying to teach them how to bring them down but you can go too far. So if I go too far, it looks like this, right? I say, tuck your hips, tuck your hips a lot, bring your rib cage down like this, and now reach at the top. And so what happens is they reverse their spinal curve. They'll, I'm gonna try to show you, they'll round their low back and extend their thoracic spine. And that, you know, that is the opposite of what you're looking for. There's no lumbar lordosis. There's no thoracic kyphosis. The neck is totally flat. And doing that is exhausting. Um, a little anecdote, I've told this story before, but uh, my friend and I, Rufus, were doing a, an Olympic weightlifting certification and I was helping him coach some people around and there was this one guy we we're just starting out with you know PVC pipes or broomsticks or just the bar and this one guy is yoked like super lean probably five percent body fat and and plenty of muscle and his spine was totally reversed it was it was not just flat it was reversed um, so his lumbar spine was flexed his thoracic spine was extended, just like we were just showing you. And I just looked at it. This guy had so much tension, which you could totally see because he was so lean. And I think that has made him uh, lean. I think that's made him good in some sorts of athletics. But trying to learn this motion, he was really trying to stick his chest up to stabilize himself during his lifts. And it just wasn't going to get him anywhere because it was throwing him too far in the direction that he kind of wanted to be. Like you kind of want a flat spine during all this stuff because then everything can stack pretty well. But when you when you go too far, when you reverse the curve, then the the amount of tension that is required to stabilize your body is just astronomical. And this guy did the bar for you know, the first hour, it's a two day course, like 16 hours, right? And most of it is hands on. He did maybe an hour and then he never touched the bar again because he was just done. He was exhausted. And I think he was getting a lot out of just watching everybody else uh, from a coaching standpoint. So <laughs> if you're doing your push ups or you're coaching somebody to do push ups, keep in mind that you can go too far. There is such a thing as too rounded. If I have an entire rounded back position, um, like this is probably too much. You see this little crunch here in the middle. But if I have a hip tuck and I still have a thoracic kyphosis, like this is a pretty good position. If I go like this and then I try to stick my chest up, then it's getting more and more weird. So you have to use your coaching eye to you know, decide what is acceptable and and take that into consideration with everything that's going on. Maybe they are just pushing themselves. Maybe they're at, you know, the 45th minute of a 60 minute metabolic class and, you know, they're tired. Maybe you let it slide if it's the last set. Maybe you say, hey, I'm going to need you to do this. I'm going to need you to, uh, you know, maybe elevating your their feet might actually take them out of that uh, lumbar flexion, that might be enough. Um, maybe you elevate their hands, maybe you say do fewer reps, whatever it may be, right? You'll have a better idea than I do as you see that person coach. Um, then the, the other thing, you, we talked about the wide rib cages in our previous video, but um, you're gonna run into that if you start to reverse the curve, right? If you start to get a thoracic lordosis then you're increasing the the width the um, lateral diameter 
of the rib cage, and you're gonna make it harder to protract your, your shoulder blades. If I glossed over that too fast for you, watch that other video. Um, so keep that in mind. You, you might be messing people up. You can't keep your chest up and reach fully. It's just impossible. That's not, there's, there's no rib cage that is that shape, right? So, so think about it. I guess that's it. I don't wanna be too repetitive here. Hopefully that was helpful for one of you and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow.